Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to welcome our next speaker, Dr. Natalia Iris, Associate Professor at the University of Oxford. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm so excited uh, to talk today. And uh, during this talk, what I'm going to do is really unpack uh, this title. What fuels engines? And, um, you know, tiny engines uh, can be fueled by quantum measurements. And one of the uh, problems with this is the mention of the word quantum and the word engines. It starts by uh, looking for trouble, really. Why? Because engines, the industrial revolution, is based on one of the most uh, fundamental pillars of physics, the laws of thermodynamics. This is a universal set of laws that governs everything from black holes to the evolution of life. The problem is that the laws of thermodynamics apply to big systems with lots of particles, and those particles are typically classical. But what happens when we have a few particles and quantum effects start to play an important role? Okay, so that's an uncharted territory now. What is an engine? What is heat in this case? So this is the field called quantum thermodynamics that wants to explore the answer to those questions. But before we go into the uh, quantum regime, let's, let me ask you, ask you the question, what fuels an engine? Can information fuel an engine? Well, this is the question that Maxwell asked himself and devise this, uh, his Maxwell demon. This is an evil being that, with the information of uh, which particles are hot and which particles are cold in a box, could let hot particles accumulate on one side of the box, effectively heating it with no fuel other than the information of the temperature of the particles. So uh, this is indeed information used as fuel. What's the trick? Well, that gathering information requires a cost. It has a cost, OK? So uh, uh, in this case, we are using this information as a cost. Now, every measurement has a cost. Even measuring time has a cost. In my lab, we measured the cost of measuring time and how it relates to how accurate we can measure time. Okay? So you can read about our experiment in New Scientist, for example. We did this with a, um, using as a clock a 50 nanometer, uh, a 5 nanometer membrane. You can see it there. It's just 50 atoms thick. Okay? So basically what we discovered is that there is no free minute. If you want to have an accurate clock, you have to pay for it. It has a thermodynamic cost. So again, there is no free lunch in the world of thermodynamics. But what if we go to the quantum world? Can we avoid paying those costs? What if we build a tiny little engine so that quantum effects start to play a role? Can we then get close to an almost free lunch? Maybe. So um, if, we, if we build these engines, can we run them beyond the limitations in efficiency that we have in classical engines? We don't know the answer to that question. So we have to actually build them and try. So here you can see a micrograph of our, one of our engines. Uh, it's constituted by a tiny semiconductor wire. It's just two nanometers of diameter. That is 10,000 times thinner than a human hair. Okay. And this carbon nanotube can move freely. Every engine needs a moving wheel, right? But more even, we can confine single electrons. And these uh, single electrons can be um, confined there so that they play the role of a gas in an engine in which the moving wheel is the carbon nanotube motion. So uh, 
in this um, in this quantum engine that we are creating, we need very low temperatures. So in fact, we this is a, a chip in which we have our in which we fabricate our engines, very similar to the ones on your phone, and we cool them down at temperatures just a twentieth of a degree above the absolute zero temperature. Okay. We do these dilution refrigerators. You might be familiar with them from quantum computing technologies. And uh, uh, so here you can see one of them. We cool them down. And why do we need to cool them down? Well, because single electrons, if not, move far too much. We need to remove energy in order to uh, keep them quiet. Okay. So, and do these engines work? Well, indeed, we can see them working. So we see that, in fact, what you're seeing here is the signal generated by the motion of the carbon nanotube. And what we found is that what it's setting that carbon nanotube in motion is electrons jumping in and out of the carbon nanotube. So it's single electrons that they are moving this wheel. It is really like quantum coal. And in fact, uh, we can go even further and we see something else that we can see is that if electrons are jumping in and out, uh, the displacement of this wheel is much smaller than if uh, there are no charges in the carbon nanotube. So the displacement then is a lot higher, a lot larger. What does it mean? Is that the knowledge about the electron charge in the carbon nanotube can be used to uh, make the uh, wheel move. So this is quantum information being used as fuel. Now these experiments are really uh, getting more complex. We require exquisite control over single electrons and the motion of these carbon nanotubes. So uh, now we are at a, at a point where we need really AI to help us do these experiments. And my lab uh, has pioneered the use of machine learning, of artificial intelligence, to control these tiny semiconductor devices. Again, very similar to those in your phone. So uh, here, really, the position of one atom that is wrong can be damning. It's a really hard control problem. And uh, we have achieved this with AI. We are now performing our experiments at Oxford uh, with AI. And we are also controlling many other experiments around the world using our algorithms. And for this, we partner with different companies and labs around the world. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to create. Um, using AI and, uh, and fabricating more sophisticated devices, we, are, we want to create um, engines in which we can set this electron in different quantum states, in different quantum regimes, and be able to check, um, can we extract energy from their quantumness? Is this even possible? Or could we run uh, more efficiently some operations in these devices? So the Foundational Questions Institute has a, um, a help us by funding this project and allowing us to explore these questions freely. And we have many plans for the future. What we want to do is understand, again, if we can build engines in which we can process information a lot more efficiently. At the moment, we are doing this 10, 000, more than 10,000 times the limits that are uh, imposed by, by the laws of physics. We might be able to understand how biological motors work at, at very small scales. And we might be able to um, really make nanochip, uh, nanomachines, on-chip engines and refrigerators. Really, what we want is to fuel the nanomachines era. So thank you. <laughs>